Dermalogica, am I right in thinking that you are coming up to 40 years? Yeah, it's old. It's astounding. I see everything, of course, from product development side, but more than that, the branding. Dermalogica is like a person. It has yeah. a personality, it has a voice, it yeah. has a position. I've never known anyone to make a product in a bathtub. That's not even hygienic. Because no one does. No, well, how do you fill anything from a bathtub? Please don't, Jane, no, I can't. I can't either. It's as unique as your fingerprints, yeah. which are completely unique. Yeah. That's your clue, that your skin is completely unique to you. And it's an emotional reason, because if it's not, you have to explain, you know, blushing to me. I don't know how many consumers we have or how many people use our product. I think it's a lot. <laughs> but I do know how many skin therapists because every single one of those people is a story and a life and a career and an entrepreneur or has the potential to be an entrepreneur. And to me, that is for me, the first point of entry. It was really expensive. And I said, why don't you using an American line? And they said, there is a one. And there wasn't. There wasn't a professional American product. Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I am here today, we have a very special treat. Especially if you are into skincare, into business, maybe you do treatments, maybe you like to go for treatments. If so, you've probably come across a little brand called Dermalogica. <laughs> <laughs> Just to the odd skew. Seated next to me is the, I'm trying to think of a word that is I was going to say queen, it's overused. Grand dame doesn't really, like, you know, Diane Duchess, I don't know what the... Dominatrix. Oh, well, we can totally go for that. Like <laughs> the dominatrix of skincare, Jane Werwan, the founder of Dermalogica. Thank you for coming. Thanks, Caroline. Thanks for the invitation. It's great to be here. It's fun. This is like, oh my God. I know, I feel as if I'm in the candy store. I keep turning around. I keep getting distracted with what's I know. I, I, I still do it. When I go, I'll turn to look and I'll go, oh. Oh, right, no focus. So, why are you in the UK? What are you up to? Well, I'm originally from the UK. Mm -hmm. um, so, I'm always coming back to see my family. My, I've got three older sisters. We're very close. Two in Dorset and one in oh, Oxfordshire. Nice. Yeah, it's good. So, every year I come back and we go for a walk, all four of us together, off the grid. Wow. Yeah. And we walk and we discuss and we chat and we fight and we cry and it's just fantastic. So that's always like a couple of weeks I come back for that. That's what I'm here for this time. Oh, nice. And then um, usually a couple of times else during the year I'll come back and see everybody. And of course for Dermalogica. Of course. <laughs> now, and you, and you, of course. Obviously, thanks. <laughs> Dermalogica, yeah. am I right in thinking that you are coming up to 40 years? Yeah. We're I actually, mean, that's like... It's old. It's astounding. Yeah, it's, it's, I'm proud. I'm proud of you. I'm really proud of you, little products. It's 40 years since we opened our first business, which was the International Dermal Institute. Still mm. is. That's on every logo for Dermalogica. Yeah. That was in 1983 when we emigrated to the United States. And then 1986, Dermalogica was born. Yeah. So what are you going to do for your 40th anniversary? Well, it's, it's interesting you say that because the team just emailed me before I came away and said, let's start planning or let's start plotting, wow. as we like to say, our 40th. Um, Three years to do it. You'll be OK. That gives you time. Yeah, exactly. A little bit of time. Yeah, a little bit of time. So why? Let's assume that people out there, because what I love about a brand like yours is that it doesn't have your name all over it. No. I'm not big on the, the sort of especially in the professional yeah in the professional arena yeah when it's your name all over it yeah I because if you if you didn't know about you if you weren't in the industry Dermalogica completely stands on its own yeah which surely has to be the goal right it's the goal and and i see everything of course from product development side but m more than that the branding Mm -hmm. So to me, Dermalogica is like a person. It has yeah. a personality, it has a voice, it yeah. has a position, it has a certain way of dressing, mm -hmm. it has a certain way of being. And so the name, when we developed the name Dermalogica, it was, we wanted it to feel, it's 1986, so now 1985 is when we were coming up with the names and everything. Great name. So thank you. So we wanted it to feel quasi-medical, but also, we, we wanted to develop a product line. This was in Los Angeles in California, which is where the line was developed by us. We said we need the future of the professional skincare industry is going to be some piece between the beauty industry. Retail. You know I hate that, yeah. that word. So yeah. cosmetics yeah. 
and medicine, pharmaceuticals. Yeah. So we want to conjure a, a name and a product and a personality and a position that's between those two. And that was before anyone was talking about cosmeceuticals, but that's exactly what it was. Mm -hmm. We didn't know that word then, so mm -hmm. we didn't call it that. So Raymond said to me, Raymond's my partner in everything, life and in the business, we started it together. We got married 10 years after we'd started Dermalogica, so it was kind of like, you know, it was great. It was Aww. a long story. <laughs> so, uh, you're, you're like, in okay. My book, in my book, you can read about <laughs> okay. that story. Oh, we're going to so, get on to the book. Thank you. I'm going to put that here. Thank you. You carry on. So... Raymond said to me, well, the language of pharmaceuticals is Latin. So he never studied Latin at school. And, you know, in the UK, yeah. I had to study it. So he said, what's Latin for skin? And I said, derma. So we wrote that down. And he said, OK, so derma. So derma. All right. So if we started with that or well, something derma. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, that's like, we, that sounds like scleroderma. That's going to sound like oh, a disease, God. <laughs> right? Or a, or a dis distortion. Oops. So he said to me, what? What do, we, do you want it to say? And I said, well, I want it to be skincare that makes sense, that is backed by education and it isn't just smoke and mirrors and mm -hmm. secret formulas of my grandmother's in a bathtub in Bulgaria. Please, please don't. Please it's don't. Not, it's no, not good for my blood pressure. And I've never known anyone to make a product in a bathtub. That's not even hygienic. because no one does. No. Well, how do you fill anything from a bathtub? Please don't, Jane. No, I can't. I can't either. So <laughs> none of that. I said, so it has to be logical. It has to make sense. And mm. he said, Dermalogical. And I said, well, I like that. And he said, I think we should drop the L. Dermalogical. Wow. Because that and it sounds was that more easy. pharmaceutical. And that was it. And we said Dermalogical. Now, of course, no one, when they first see it, can say the name. It's all Dermatologica, right? So oh, we always yeah, say yeah, yeah. Dermalogica and the T is silent. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> That's okay. But so that that's was... like literally nearly 40 years ago. Yeah. So what, how do you go from that to where you are now in terms of like, what SKUs did you launch with and 27, why? 27 products. You launched with 27 yeah. products. Are you, are you insane? Yeah, because here's the thing. The what? first, so special cleansing gel, I wanted a completely soap free cleanser. I love a foaming cleanser. I'm all about that. So I said, I want a foaming cleanser. I also love a bit of a frimmer tool, which were the electric brushes. Yeah. And I love foaming with those. And I so, hate all of that, but I love Dermalogica. So carry on, because I've got my do, faves. Because you carry have an ultra-calming cleanser, don't you? Yeah. I know. Okay, so there's a story behind that too. So <laughs> this one was for me, because I said, I've got to have a foaming cleanser. I can't use soap. I never use soap. So it's got to be a naturally foaming ingredient, which is from the lavender plant. So anyway, this was one of the first products, first three that we developed. And then we, because I was developing it for a skin therapist, I wanted a foaming cleanser, then we wanted to have a clay-based cleanser, yeah. and then a creamy water-soluble cleanser. And that was the one, it was then Essential Cleansing Solution, and that was the one that skin therapists would use in the treatment, and it had to give enough slip and glide mm -hmm. for 10 minutes of cleansing. Because yeah, we're doing a double cleanse, five minutes each time. So it had to remain slippy. And the whole of Dermalogica is developed to be used in a treatment room. Mm -hmm. So as you know, we, we spend a lot longer cleansing someone else's skin than the 30 than seconds at the yeah. basin where you splash off. So the products had to be developed in a way that wouldn't sensitize the skin mm -hmm. in that whole 10 minutes. So that led us to the formulation, which was no mineral oil, no lanolin. I'm allergic to lanolin, so that was a big Mate, event. I love that you're just like, well, I'm allergic to it, so I'm not putting it in. Yeah, I can't love put that. it in. How can I put it in if no, I can't It's like me, product? I'm not going to put shellfish in my skincare, but... No. I mean, there's not a big demand for it, but... Well, there you go. So, <laughs> <laughs> so it was no SD alcohol, no artificial colour, no artificial fragrance no formaldehyde as a preservative because I... Well, this is 40 years ago when it wasn't such a, exactly. a rarity. Yeah. And the big thing was everyone kept saying, I remember the, our, our competitors, friendly competitors that we really like very much from another brand, a French mm -hmm. brand, René Guino, <laughs> said... Let's drop it in there. Well, it was Patrick, Patrick Tibion, who I love and adore, and he's still, you know, we're still friends. But he said to me, Jane, do me a favour, no one cares about what you don't put in a product. And I said, well, Patrick, oh, I think Patrick. they will. And I think they should. Oh, poor Patrick. <laughs> so. Imagine not knowing that. <laughs> poor Patrick. But remember... This is 1986. But then you went, not you, but then the industry took it way too far. Oh, now, now To the it's point crazy. where the EU is like, you can't say free from, stop it. I know, you know. I know. 
And remember, at that stage in 1986, we had compulsory ingredient listing on every package in yeah. the States, but not in the UK. No. So nobody knew what was what in was their in product, anything. good, bad or ugly. Mm. They didn't know. So it was all very fresh and new and different. And we did it very purposefully. We backed it with education. And this was a product that was going into the hands, literally, yeah. of skin therapists. Yeah. And when you're a skin therapist and you've worked on skin so long and you're doing, you know, treating skin every day, everyone has a different skin. Mm -hmm. Every time they come in, their skin is different. You know what product feels right. There's a tactile feel to it mm -hmm. that has to be right. And you know well. instinctively what to use and what not to use. Isn't it amazing yeah. how people's skin can be so different? Completely different. It's just so bizarre. And you wouldn't, the average person on the street who doesn't deal in skin yeah. would never, they would just think, oh, skin is skin. And it's not. Just not. It's as unique as your fingerprints, yeah. which are completely unique. Yeah. That's your clue that your skin is completely unique to you. And changes, not just as you age, which, you know, chronologically, of course, the skin changes. However, it's changing every minute. You know, people say, skin's a living organ. And so if, if it's not, and it's an emotional organ, because if it's not, you have to explain, you know, blushing to me. Yeah. Because we, yeah. our skin will change. Yeah. Texture, warmth, color, depth, yeah. just on an emotional thought we have. That's how every time a client comes in for a skin treatment, you have to look at that skin again. Because... Mm -hmm. That skin is the different skin than the skin you saw a month ago, six yeah. weeks ago, because now if they're a different part of their menstrual cycle or a different part of their menopausal cycle or a different part of what, it's going to be different. <laughs> so you have to look at the skin as a living organ and you have to treat it as such and, and understand that this is, a, is something that is incredibly intimate, incredibly personal. And when you're developing products for skin, you have to think about that. And how are you going to tweak it and adjust for every and client. I think that's one of the things that you got so right early on is that that relationship between a skin therapist and the people lying on the bed in front of them because yeah. you don't get that in a retail setting and you don't get that in a doctor's office no the doctor's office is very functional obviously it needs to be yeah. but when someone comes to see you your job is to make them leave feeling better yeah everywhere like just everywhere the in mind every way. yeah in every way and so there's when you touch somebody especially you know so for example if I met you and we didn't know each other I would probably you know shake your hand mm -hmm. so if I'm being now I'm back in California I might like shake your hand and touch your yeah, hand. yeah yeah and then maybe if we knew each other I might hug you yeah but it would be really strange if I came up to you put my hands on your face and touched you like yeah. hello Caroline oh it's so nice to meet you this yeah. is so beautiful I've done that before I'm just gonna put that up well that you know that's a little Odd. It is a bit odd. <laughs> but that's it was odd are. at the time. <laughs> so this is so intimate. Yeah. And, and yet we do it every day. And it could be someone that we've never met before. Mm -hmm. And as I often say, you can, you know, we say come into this small dark room, take off your clothes. Literally. I'll approach you from behind your head and yeah. relax. Don't worry. And then you can take your bra <laughs> off, relax, it's yeah. fine. And the hands appear and you're like, yeah. okay. Yeah. And you're trying, because it's about the most terrifying thing you can do to another human being. But we make it okay as skin therapists. And how did that start? How did you go from launching the brand to getting it into the hands of skin therapists? Because, you know, it's a, the market's quite, uh, I'm going to say competitive, yeah. busy. Yeah. How did you get in there? Well, we were there first. So we started educating the professional skin therapist in 1983 when I emigrated to the States. And I went and thought I'd work in a salon because that mm -hmm. was my training, trained in the UK. I'm going to work in a salon. And when I went for job interviews, they, it was quickly discovered that the training was very, very weak yeah. in America. And California had a license, but only seven out of the 50 states did. So I had my teaching credential in, in skin therapy. And so I said, well, the big opportunity is, to teach. is gonna teach. We can upskill the basic 600 hour training, which is like four months training. And we can upskill these skin therapists to become successful because they have the knowledge of lymph drainage and yeah. reflexology and Ayurvedic physiology medicine, and, physiology yeah. and everything. So we started training. We established the International Dermal Institute in 1983. Dermalogica came three years later. So the intention was not to begin with a product. It was a school. Yeah. Right. And then the when the first. skin therapist came and they said, you know, well now, what, we gonna use? what should we use? And I said, well, what are you using now? And they told me, and it was Dr. Babor, René Guineau, Jean Gatineau, wow. Matisse, 
those wow, days. Wow, that is a while RVB, ago. RVB. Wow. They were using those products. And I said, but are you importing them from Europe? And they said, yes. And I said, are you, you're paying customs and duties and the thing. Yeah. It was really expensive. And I said, mm. why don't you using an American line? And they said, there isn't one. And there wasn't. Jesus. There wasn't a professional American product. My God. I didn't even realize that. No, because listen, all we had to sell to, you were either selling your product in a department store. Nordstrom. Yep. And that's Estee Lauder. That would be yep. Lancome. That would be, yep. those were the department store brands. Yep. Drugstore or pharmacy. And that yep. was Neutrogena. Avino. Bonneville. Johnson Avino, and Johnson. That's right. So yep. that was that. Catalog. Mary Kay. Avon. Avon. Uh, Avril Schlein. God. Um, that was that. Or Salon. And no one was selling to the salons. So Lauder, L'Oreal, they all dominated department store. Neutrogena, J&J, &J, et cetera, pharmacy. all dominated pharmacy. And there was no internet. There was no, no anything. Not. And then you had Mary Kay, Avon, Average Home, all that, Jaffra, dominating. Going to your front door. Yeah, the front door. So we were the salon. Wow. Yeah. So here's the thing. No print advertising, we had no money. So no print advertising, we sold to the students we were training mm -hmm. who became successful, upskilled them. They, they were our original influencers. Yeah, of course. And because they believed in it, they weren't being paid. They were, they were retailing the product. Retail was unheard of in the States. No one was selling product to a consumer in the salon. So that came first. So we were doing all this stuff. And in it the had right to be place at the right time right with the place, right idea right and the right training. Yeah, yeah exactly. Wow. I know it's hell of an adventure, and now I mean, look, look, it's fantastic. I know, so it's much fantastic. Stuff. We did never use the word beauty. We mm. never used the word facial. We talk about skin treatment, skin therapy. Again, the brand has a personality and a position and a voice. Yeah, and to itself, which is you know why it's been around for so long. Yeah, thank you. So, how many yeah skin therapists <laughs> do you have, sort of? I was going to say around the world. I'm loath to ask the question because I know the answer is going to be insane because, of course, as regular viewers will know, during lockdown, Dermalogica kept everyone on mm -hmm. and stepped up the training. Well, if you can't put your hands on faces, let's do more training. Yes, we, we told everyone that works at Dermalogica um, and works for and works with Dermalogica, we're not cutting anybody. No one's getting furloughed. Nobody's getting, you know, mm -hmm. you're all going to have jobs. And we also told our skin therapists, we know that you are going to be locked down. And it was such a long lockdown for us. And, yeah. and so California much of it was, well. yeah, and so much of it was that people were saying hair salons, nail salons, even massage therapy, but leaving us out. Yeah, don't, that, best not to get I me started down that tangent. I think it's sort of hidden tangent. misogyny too. I mean, I've Oh yeah, I, my most watched Instagram live is me calling Boris yeah. Johnson a prick. A hundred percent. And I was like, what is going on? They were <gasps> laughing at us. Oh yes, yeah. yeah. How Rage. dare they? This is an Rage. industry that puts more people, especially women, people that identify mm -hmm. as women, into their business than any other industry in the world. Yeah. This is an industry that Well, that's is... why they try and take it down, because yeah. it's too powerful. Too powerful. Oh, fucked with the wrong people. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. So where do you go when you started with 27 SKUs? Yeah. And then you start to Look, expand? Yeah. And we... then how do you go from that to Dermalogica? Yeah. 84 markets, 106 countries now. And how many therapists? We train 100,000 a year around the world. Isn't that crazy? I mean, that's just not... It's I mean, it's like the kind of figures where you're like... It's like it's world record figures is what it feels like. It just feels like... Yeah. What? Yeah. And I, I'm all about those numbers. I rather... I don't know how many consumers we have or how many people use our product. I think it's a lot. <laughs> I think it might be quite a few. Yeah, but I do know how many skin therapists because every single one of those people is a story and a life and a career and an entrepreneur or has the potential to be mm -hmm. an entrepreneur. And to me, that is, for me, the first point of entry. And then they, if they're doing a great job and they do, yeah. the consumer will be there. Yeah. Right? If so you build it, they will come. If you build it and you do it well, they will come and they will return. So... We started in California, which was 
really cool in the 1980s. Mm -hmm. California in the 80s was like on fire because tech was being developed. Right. We didn't know it then, but Silicon yeah, Valley was booming. There was a golden age of the movie industry. So in LA, that's our main industry. Mm -hmm. San Francisco was popping. We were in LA. California was just like felt so relevant. Yeah. And so we had a license in California. New York did not. Right. We launched the product in Australia before we launched in New York City or New York the State. The States is a different beast, isn't totally, it? Totally. 50 different countries. It's 50, different, 50 countries. different tax codes. Yes. Yes. Just crazy. Licensing, tax codes, banking, tax returns, everything. You have to do a complete business model and a complete tax for every single state. It's crazy. So we launched in Australia, and from Aust and we also launched Southeast Asia, Malaysia, Taiwan, uh, Singapore, Thailand. Those were some of our first markets. We did trade shows where you literally had to fly to the show, yeah. set up your booth, yeah. and speak to people. Yeah. There was no virtual. Mm. In lockdown, as you said, we stepped up our education, and the beauty of it was that we could use virtual yeah. technology to be able to reach therapists around the world with education, which we can now. We couldn't then. We had to literally send educators out. So it was great. Just a, just a small undertaking. A small undertaking. Now, One you've taken a little smidgen of this experience and put it into skin in the game. Yeah. I mean, yeah. what a title. Come on. Everything you need is already inside you. It's true. Now, how did this come about? My notes, by the way, I feel like Oprah and the I, book club. You know, here's the thing. I had been told for many years, oh, Jane, you should write a book. And I, I did, it's not that I disagreed, but I thought, well, what can I write a book about? Because I, could I have written a skincare book? Yes, but yeah. that existed. Mm. It didn't take me, none of us invented, truly, very much of what we do. We yeah. stand on the shoulders of others, and yeah. others will stand on our shoulders, and hopefully we move it forward. So I thought, I can, no, I can't. I mean, I could write a skincare book. It's not the thing I want to do, though. The International Dermal Institute could write a skincare book. Yeah, exactly. It doesn't have to be me. I've Why never put they? my name on anything. I know, right? Why haven't they? I don't know. I'm going to have to speak to them about it. You have to sort it. that out. I know, Because God right? knows Sodesco aren't keeping their end up. We should be writing. You should be. Okay, to, to do. sort that out. Write that down, Sharon. Write that down, please, <laughs> for me. So we said, um, you know, we we have to step forward and we have to talk about what only we can talk about. So what is it that only I could talk about? And I thought, well, it's not skincare because other people could talk about that. So over the years, I kept thinking, oh, you know what I think it is? I think it's about the importance of the apprenticeship system, which I'm a huge believer mm -hmm. in. Skill set training mm -hmm. unlocks more doors than any other. I never went to university. Neither did I. And I didn't need to. For Neither what we did, did and what we do, we didn't need to. I had to. no interest, couldn't wait to get out of school. Me too. And go and do the school I wanted to do. Exactly. So skill set training, and by the way, we're short of skill set workers. I mean, I can oh. find, I can find, you know, um, PhDs with degrees in philosophy quicker than I can find a good electrician in LA, or someone who know, knows how to read a PNL <laughs> and what time to turn up for work. Hundred percent, hundred percent. So that said, I thought I'm going to write about apprenticeship training. Well, I'd started to write that book, and it was as dull as a stick. There. And I thought, I, I shouldn't. I mean, City and Girls can do a much better job of that than me. As so they that's should. That, so forget that. Then I thought, okay, you know what? I think I'm going to write about the thing that I've always focused on, which is women's entrepreneurship and financial independence, and tell the stories of women entrepreneurs and how their entrepreneurial journeys made them financially independent. Well, I could. Am I the only one that could write that? No. So ultimately, I thought the only thing I can write about that only I know about is my story. Yeah. So maybe I should write about that. It's so quite I'm a think, story. It's quite a story, as is you, as is all of us. Oh, no, mate, you're, you're a little bit ahead of me. I wouldn't, you know, I'm not putting myself at that level. I think yours will be a more interesting read. But anyway, no, thank you. So I went to find a book agent because this is a whole process. You've got to oh, find yeah. an agent and then they've yeah. got to get you a publisher, etc. So that happened and... Harper Collins came back to me. In they did my book. They're good, aren't they? Mm. I know. I'm really proud of that. And you are too, I'm sure, yeah, because yeah. it's great to have a good publisher. I don't know. It's like a stamp of approval. It's like the good housekeeping seal of approval. Yeah. Isn't it? Because <laughs> most people, I mean, I hate to say this, but they'll, they'll self-publish mm. because it's hard to get yourself published. Yeah. 
So I was really grateful for that. So December 2019, HarperCollins said, OK, we're on board. I said, OK, great. I know I've got the framework. I don't quite know what I'm going to write about, but I've got the framework. Mm. And then they said, we need the finished manuscript by September 2020. Oh, you're longer than me. <laughs> Bastards. So I said, <laughs> OK, I think I could do it. Nine months. OK. I had a huge travel schedule, traveling a lot. I thought, well, how am I going to do this? OK, well, I'll write on the plane, right? So Louisa, look, that never it works. never works. In March of 2020, we went into lockdown. Oh, uh, there you go. And I thought, OK. And they told us in California six weeks. I don't know how long they Yeah, they to told you. us. And then they said maybe July. And I remember us all going, <laughs> yeah. July? Yeah. I can't wait until July. July? Exactly. And then it was like July a year later, yes. still talking about it. Yes. God. So I grabbed that opportunity. I thought, OK, the universe has sent me a moment where I can sit down and write. And that's mm. what I did. So I wrote every single day from two in the afternoon to four in the afternoon. I found that was my best. I experimented. That was my best time. And I wrote the story of what happened to me and what else, you know, happened to everyone else and wrote the book of Skin in the Game. <laughs> um, what I love is, and I showed you when you came in. So I love, I, I love this story. This is my favorite. So I start a book at the back, mm -hmm. I, even if it's fiction. Me too. I, t I can't help it. It's, have to. If I'm watching a film with my husband, I have to Wikipedia it to see the plot. Yeah, I know. I, I can't, right? Yeah. So I open the back page and says about me. If you have read the book, you already know lots about me. If you're reading this before the book, ten of my life rules might persuade you to continue. I'm already invested. I'm in. <laughs> Because you are talking to me. Yeah. That back page isn't acknowledgements. It's, by the way, if you're someone who looks at the back of the book. Yeah, here are the bits that you should just I was remember. Like, mm. And then I was like, okay, how far does she take this? And then I'm like, right, okay, bit of a glossary, lovely. Yeah. Okay, and then it's, I'm like, oh, no, there's more. Anything that has a number or bullet point, I'm like, she's on I love that, it. I'm all over it. Okay, you asked, I once spoke at the dollar, and then there's your tips for skin. And I'm like, oh, I'm still going. I'm still, in. and I'm still. And then it says, did you skip to the back? Yeah. And I was, I was like going, yeah, I did. For those mm. of you who always skip to the back of the book to see if there is a wrap up. I'm Me. one of them. Here yeah. is a summary of my most useful and often used bits of advice. And I was like, oh, I'm so having this book going through. And then I'm like, OK, here comes more. Last page. Even the last page is done <laughs> so well. And then I opened it randomly and thought, stop doing this. And I opened it and I thought, oh, God, this if this book is not made for me, because it is exactly what I did. So number 13, I don't even know what chapter we're in, but I opened it, it says number 13, appoint a truth teller. Yeah. There's no place for arrogant, cynical, lazy know-it-alls. If I tell you that not one person in this building <laughs> will lie to me or no. try and, I mean, if you ask these two here, they'll just be like, why? Look, see? <laughs> Yeah, I'm laughing. KG, I mean, you don't need a yes person. No, so that's not helpful. My husband would be like, well, "Why would you do that?" Yeah. My kids, that's a shit idea. I mean, there's n even my mum, God rest her, yeah, my would go, too. "Are you sure about yeah. that?" Love? Like, yeah. oh, I'm not too sure. You yeah. know, oh, are you sure about that? Yeah. I mean, do you want to do that? You know, yeah. there's not. And I thought that's why. That's clearly why I get really stressed. Yeah. in the right way, like in the way that you're supposed to be, because you care. And you're a truth teller. And because I'm surrounded by people yeah. who have, I mean, there's not one yes person in this building. No, and I'm, I'm bluntly, you don't need someone who's going to kiss your backside. Oh, no. no. And, and you She's wetting herself. She can't even and you'll contain spot, it. And you'll spot it in 30 seconds. Oh, it's not. Yeah, you don't need it's, it. So, yeah, that's when I was like, OK, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have the book. Thanks very much. Uh, so where can people purchase the book? We know where they can get Dermalogica. Where can they purchase your book? They can get it from Dermalogica.com, but you can go on to Amazon, Waterstones, any of the book fellows. Was my number one parenting rule. Yeah, what was that? Oh, my job as a parent is to keep you safe, healthy and happy in that order. If you're not safe, you won't be either healthy or happy. So safety is first. If you're safe but not healthy, you won't be happy, so healthy is second. Once you're safe and healthy, you can then ask for something to make you happy. Exactly. You're good. Mine is, if I don't raise you, someone else will. <laughs> Genuinely, as you can tell I had three boys. So I don't give a shit okay. what Simon's mum says. Right. I don't care what your friends say. Right. I am telling you, you're doing it this way yeah. until they're old enough to sort of say, well, actually, I want, then that's fine. You know, and that's fine. Then I had the conversation yesterday with the with two of them, with Max, the youngest, and Daniel, the second. Yeah. And I was trying to explain. To, I said, Max, with you, I'm more of like a, a sort of supervisor. I'm not yeah. a manager. 
Right. My management days are over. Right. Because they're 18 to 31. Yes. I'm more of a supervisor. So, mm -hmm. Dan, with you, I'm a consultant. And even then, it's if you're interested. Yeah. You know? But when they were teenagers yeah. and we lived in central London, yeah. three boys in central London, I was on their case. Have to be. And their friends are still more scared of me than their own parents. Yeah. Because they'd come as in the it, house, they'd be like, all right. I'd be like, I'm sorry, what? Yeah, as it should be. I'm sorry, what? Yeah, what? Well, tissues off. Yeah. I'm Mrs. Hirons. And now yes. they joke. They go, all right, Mrs. Hirons. I go, shut up, Jack. You know? <laughs> exactly. Cause, but you need that. You need the, to know the rules before you can break them. Once you know the rules, you can break them. And if there are no rules, more fool you. Because yeah. that gives that generation of... Yeah. Doesn't doesn't matter about winning. It's just that you took part. Yeah. And I'm like, no, it matters about winning. Yeah. It absolutely matters because about winning because you're not going to get out there in the workforce and they're going to go, oh, you no. almost made it. Well done. No, it's not good. It doesn't happen. It's not real it's life. It's not real life. Stop real wrapping life. our kids in cotton wool. Yeah. No. I mean, I say to mine, all right, you could have tried harder. That was a bit shit, babe. And they go, yeah, fair, mum. They go, do you want something to eat? Yeah, lovely. Yeah, absolutely. Be a truth teller, but you can, you know, you can do it with a cashmere glove. You can do everything with kindness. Yeah. Also, the fear of God. I love you, but I will kill you. <laughs> that was more Ava. But, you know, anyway. Um, thank you so much. I feel like we've gone way over the time we were given with you. But I am could not be more thrilled to have you sitting here. I can't actually believe you're sitting here. I might have a cry later. It's been quite the week. It's been quite <laughs> the week. Do you remember when I first saw you at CW? Yeah. I was telling them. So we went to CW. It was a lunch. Was it lunch or evening? Evening. It was Evening. Evening. And, there, and obviously, Jane's on the top table with Vasiliki. Because, hello, darling. And I just dropped to my knees and started bowing. And they, like Wayne's World, and they all looked at me like, is she okay? And you're like, stand up, get up. I was like, oh, absolutely not. I'll stay here. It's fine. I'm just like, if you don't see what you did for the industry and for, for, for skin therapists, you know, for, for all of us. And then again in lockdown. Yeah. Like... You know, so thank you. Thank you for being here and thank you for... It is more than a pleasure. And listen, congratulations on your success. Congratulations Thanks. on Skin Rocks. Thanks. We're babies. We're well, babies. Listen, that's when you're learning to run. So get ready. Hang on to your It's seat. usually me trying not to run <laughs> and everyone else like, well, we'll do this. And I'm like, oh, could you just calm down, please? You're making me nervous. Well, it's, it's great. And it's not easy. And I know how much love and time it takes to develop a line that speaks of you and yeah. speaks for you and is what you want to see in a product. So congratulations. I've shared this before. I'm going to share this before we go. So have you ever read, I've got to, I keep saying it, but have you read Estee Lauder's? <gasps> it's the best <gasps> book ever. Okay. So people think I'm joking. A How success, they, A success yes, story. Yes. I think they have not re-released that because it's so not it, what Lauder is now. Have you read Leonard Lauder? Yes. And it's nowhere oh, near it's as no, good. Oh, no, no. It is when, so, so I highlighted. Oh, oh my God. God. I've got oh, my copy. So, it's highlighted Oh, you're going to be yellow. jealous. Are you ready for mine? Mine? I bought mine in Amazon. No, stop. What? It's autographed. It, no! It turned up and I opened it and then I asked the, I asked Jane Lauder because I was at an event within like a week. I said, Jane, did you all grandmother autograph and she went yeah she used to give them to staff at Christmas and it still oh. came wrapped in the white ribbon so I did another one that came in the white ribbon but it wasn't autographed I, I peeked so oh, it's autographed that's lovely. You deserve and you know it. when you're like oh and I'm going to my husband it's autographed and he's like what is I'm that like, is amazing I'm like my state order book he went by who <laughs> that's okay I went we know Estee we know. James but the, the two things in that, one where she says, where she the way she talks about Helena Rubinstein and Elizabeth Arden. I know. Oh, no, it's, it's a it movie. Is, it's a movie. Oh, it's such a movie. Like, it's not going to get made while the sons are alive. And, but and when she talks about oh how they God. launched Clinique in 1972. Oh, like, and how they just hired Irvin Penn to do the first, everything. How she developed Gift with Purchase. Oh, fragrance. Yes. And then fragrance. holding the customer's hand, yes. over, but not letting go of them so they touch can't leave. A, touch a woman. Like touch a woman, and that's honestly making your sale. Honestly, it, it it's like True. it's an absolute. Ne and never judge a woman's wallet by the appearance. She tells the great story of selling in Saks Fifth Avenue in yeah. in Texas, and a woman came up, and no one was helping her, and Estee Lauder yeah. personally helped her, and the woman bought a fortune of product. Yeah. I think it's brilliant. She also talks about making eye contact. So I'm going to just toast me. So I'm on the board of UCLA <laughs> Health. Yeah. One of the largest teaching hospitals in the world, one of the top hospitals in the world. And what I learned from the neuropsych department is when human beings look at each other mm -hmm. in the eyes, what's actually happening is like Bluetooth pairing mm -hmm. of a device. 
we're connecting now. Yeah. And we're saying, okay, what do we have in common? Do we have something in common? Yes, we do. You'll say something, I'll laugh, and then you think, oh, I like this person. Yeah. Oh, I think this person or, could be my friend. Or, or you're putting my back not. up. Or warnings. Exactly. Yeah. And we do it subconsciously, and it makes a connection. Yeah. And once you make that connection, you've got it. And Estee Lauder didn't ever talk about Bluetooth pairing, no, but she spoke she knew about exactly this connection. She, I mean, the, the bath oil. Yeah. The story about the bath oil, like yeah. the book, it should be. I think it should be required reading. It, it's like an education in I, itself. I don't think it's in print anymore. No, it's not. You have to buy it secondhand on Amazon. Every time I mention it, you can't get it for months afterwards because, of course, anyone who has one, yeah. and then the price... But I'm sorry, that's someone else's problem because I've got two copies. One is signed yeah. and one is still in the white ribbon. But I it's absolutely... Agree. My two favourite books from anything to do with this industry, but also separate from it, both out of print, sorry, but Estee Lauder, A Success Story... Yeah. I loved that. I loved all the photographs too. Oh. Oh. And Vidal Sassoon, oh. his book he wrote very early in his career, and it's called Sorry to Keep You Waiting, Madam. Oh, my God. I know. Like a service industry yeah. before it became a dirty word. Exactly. And he cut hair with a collar and tie. <sighs> These are the people we stand on the shoulders of. I had this vision of, you know, because Helen Rubenstein had a uh, salon. Yeah. In central London, I had this, and and then obviously Arden and yeah. Rubenstein both had them in New York, and I had this vision of one yeah. day I'll take that same site. But then when you go to it now, it's like a really boring office in Mayfair. You're like, oh no, yeah. it's not going to be that glam again. Yeah. But any, I mean, and I, I don't even know why I started telling you about the book. No, we got so excited. Because we got excited. And Estee Lauder also, by the way, her first products she sold in salons. She did sell in salons. She did. And department stores weren't interested. Yeah. She couldn't get into them. Have you seen my vintage stuff outside? No. Oh, I'll show you the vintage. I've got the vintage stuff uh, from the 40s. Uh, okay, what are we waiting for? Yeah, well, Excuse thank me. you so much. <laughs> thank you so much. Thanks. Sorry, we went off on a tangent there, guys, but I know you, it's like porn for them. Uh, thank you so much. Thanks, you are Kate. the best of the best, the cream of the crop. We are very privileged to have you in our industry. Thank you. I feel very grateful to have spent a life in an industry that's been so receptive to me, so thanks. My pleasure. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs> the lights! What the f***?